Okay, and welcome back. So what we're going to look at today now is uh, working with the fountain pen in the sketchbook or the notebook. And so the only really difference in technique uh, so much as we're doing now is really the pen itself. So notice the tip is a little bit more traditional or old school. So it's uh, sort of like a feather quill uh, pen but this is a, a mechanical fountain pen so in this in this particular brand is pretty cheap it's only about fifteen or twenty dollars i think it's just called fountain pen you can get them up to hundreds of dollars the falcon is a really nice brand um, these do the trick pretty well let me show you how this works really quickly you open this up here and then you have a cartridge where the ink is and here's my ink bottle here it's just higgins and this actually was a a redder color it was a little too fluorescent and I put black ink into it to make it a little bit darker red and all essentially you do you just open this up you dip the pin in you suck some of the ink up into it close it up then you put this cap back on and you're ready to go of course the top cap goes on like that but this gives you a little bit different uh, mark making strategy it feels a little bit different uh, when you make a mark, so I'll do some a few things over through here uh, Just to kind of show you um, But it's really nice because it makes a kind of a backwards mark when you want to draw Like up like that and off, of course down those of you that are left-handed. It's just the same way You'll just make a different um, different stroking pattern with that. So uh, if I'm drawing a sphere maybe in light over here with a little shadow like so and you can lay a little tone on it like that you get the idea or a cylinder maybe <clears throat> you get the idea through there okay so that's pretty pretty good pretty common um, you know if we're just doing a, a quick little structure head sketch in through here just to give you a, a sense for the feel of um, the material as I draw a little bit and and of course you know you can order a pen online through Amazon or any of the fine fountain pen companies or you can go to your local art store which is what I did here in the Cincinnati area and uh, buy one at the store they probably won't carry the highest end um, and it really is, to me it wasn't that important to get a high high end one uh, but you certainly can and, I'm, and I might on my own too as well. So uh, it just depends on on your needs and practice So the pit pins work pretty well as well as the uh, the fountain pens heck even a ballpoint pen one of my old professors Harry Carmian in Los Angeles when I was out there studying used used ballpoint pen for a lot of his little his little ink drawings he would take lunch breaks and draw on napkins during during lunch hours and, and just work on ballpoint pens and most of those were really really uh, pretty brilliant so what what really the, the key thing is uh, is uh, drawing practice and in understanding that certainly will will help your your practice but that takes time so I think you you get the idea with that okay so kind of what I'm doing here is just a little head structure sketch just to show you the pen nothing nothing special here just a quick quick underpinning of a drawing just to show you something really quickly <clears throat> and then we'll get down to our our, our uh, demo our lesson so notice how I'm just just quickly mapping in the shadow pattern here along the hair we're going to be doing or I'm going to be doing hopefully you'll do it with me a study from Courbet French realist painter uh, self-portrait of his with a pipe one of my favorite uh, of his he did some really outstanding portraits in his time really wonderful wonderful stuff he's got a little pipe coming out through here like so okay so that gives you an idea real quick quick thumbnail sketch of um, the composition okay so let me move over here and I'll do a, another drawing demo so I'm only going to be using this fountain pen today and in, in nothing nothing else so again the ink I use is Higgins you can use almost any kind of ink that you want um, 
Kohinoor, sepia ink, or any colored ink that you want later on. For my students, black or sanguine or sepia is uh, uh, preferred. The brown, the burnt orange, or the black. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at this Corbet. This is in the Web Gallery of Art section under his his self-portraits, or just portraits, and you'll find a self-portrait with a pipe. And that's Corbet, it's C-O-U-R-B-E-T, and this is the image I'm going to be working from. So I'll refer back to it gradually as, as I draw and we work, we work together uh, a little bit. I am also working from a digital copy. You might be able to see my computer just a little bit popping through, but it's right in front of my book as I draw. And so we'll go ahead and, and get started. I'll draw on the right side here. If I need to, I'll take, take a few notes. So uh, I'll go ahead and start with, again, the structure of the head. Sometimes I include the hair if I need to. Sometimes uh, I don't. It just depends. I, I always start by keeping it very loose, very gradual. Uh, as I work the composition. Sometimes, I, a lot of times, I'll try to find and locate the bottom of the chin right in through here, if you notice. Uh, and then his head is on a slight axis tilt this way, which is going to be important to know. And then I really uh, harp on getting that neck in there really, really quick. So he's got a little uh, shirt with a collar, like a sweater type shirt. Looks remarkably contemporary actually for that for even today so a little bit of shirt shoulder as he's, he's, he's kind of uh, slumping in a little bit towards that and then of course over uh, in through here and I might just indicate the collar I don't want to get too detailed at this stage uh, I want to keep it loose but just trying to plot and, and design the drawing if you think about the analysis of the forms that um, we're studying. So the actual bottom of the, the actual bony part of the, of the chin is right in through, roughly right in through here as we come up a little bit through there. All right, so then I'll start to gradually work in where I think the, fall, the flow of the hair, the design of the painting that we're working from in through here as the hair flows down over this way. So it's a pretty wild haired uh, painting which I really like. I think it's really kind of indicative of just sort of relaxed artist. Really self-confident Corbet which I think is pretty pretty remarkable. He was such an accomplished painter and very self-confident which which is not a bad thing, really not a bad thing, is develop the self-confidence, I think, and go out there and prove it to everybody by demonstrating it to them. All right, so I've, I've generally laid in the tentative uh, linear analysis for the outline of the form axis of the head, and I'm gonna start to kind of bring that in a little bit, tighten these things up somewhat. You know, the pen flows really nicely it's a little bit different experience than the pit pins. The shaft that I'm holding is a little bit thicker for the for the pin, which is nice. So again, he's very tilted through. So find the eye line, very tilted over this way, and then we have the brow line with just above it, bottom of the nose, and through here. And he's very much in shadow to where. You know, the bottom of the nose feels, you know, the whole nose structure in this particular case feels feels very much like a, a triangle. And so sometimes I'll just dab in the nose shadow in through here, and sometimes I'll do it with the eyes too. So I'll give a little indication of where that nose structure will be really quickly without trying to, to belabor a whole lot in through here. And so I'm just just softly, lightly indicating, and then I'm going to go ahead and go for the uh, formation of the shadow patterns now of the eye. Now I'm thinking about skull structure, head structure, but I'm not necessarily drawing it per se so rigidly like I might do just a structure drawing. 
but I am thinking about it. It's there as I follow these, these very uh, two-dimensional shadow shapes, you know, as I draw. And then I'll go back once I lay all these in and I'll analyze, okay, how accurate was I? How was my proportion? Uh, scale of things, what did I miss? And then I'll, I'll go back and um, I'll correct as we go along. And that's something for, for you to realize, a student to realize, is that you're always in a state of self-analysis and correction up until the last mark that you make. So, you, you know, a lot of students are race and um, there's no real, real need for it. I understand the the wanting to get it right, but getting it right um, can come through the drawing process. It doesn't have to be start and stop and in a, in a race. So already you can see I'm starting to develop, you know, a, a tonal pattern through there. So there's a big highlight on the forehead here, and so sometimes in pen and ink, I'll just go ahead and it's kind of a quick little gestural, actually outline of that. So you have to adapt your technique for the material that you're that you're using. Uh, the eye here, the structure of the eye, again, just worrying about the shadow shape. So this particular on the the uh, lighting or what the model's giving you in terms of reading the structure can be very 2D or 3D uh, analysis. And the truth be told is that when you're drawing, it's really a combination of both 2D and the three-dimensional. Right now, to me, it's more two-dimensional in this particular study, only because I'm looking at shadow shape right now. But I'm also thinking about, again, this mark I'm making here, the roundness of and the fullness of the eyeball as it fits into his uh, skull socket. So, And then I'll just fill in the shadow shape some here. as we go on. There we go. So laying in nicely the form of the brow and since he's heavily lit from the very top you're going to get that dramatic kind of light. One suggestion I would do when I was in art school in LA, my professor Steve Houston, who's a wonderful artist, uh, would have us do flashlight studies or we would take a a black marker, a sharpie actually, and we would, you'd get a friend, my girlfriend at the time, and we would light each other with a, in a dark room with a flashlight and you would just map out the shadow pattern of a composition. So for instance, it might just have one large big shape of shadow and, and some light, light areas and it really helped you see, you know, shadow patterns. So I think you get the idea with that drawing. It's fairly crude, but I think you get the idea. So that's something else that you can do in your training is to just look at the positive negative shapes, uh, shadow shapes of the uh, image that you're drawing, whether it's from life or from reproduction. Hopefully it's mostly from life in the beginning as you're learning your craft. And that will help you see to see shadow shape more cleanly and more uh, hopefully more fluently uh, as well. So you know a lot of this hair I can go ahead and already start to block in. And so what you get you know with this technique, um, and this by the way it really doesn't change with the medium. You get an overall picture of where you're at with your drawing, you know, relatively uh, quickly, which is really what, what you want in your study. So all his, most of his uh, collar and shoulder area are in relative shadow, except a touch of the collar, we'll get to that a little bit later. And so I can come across here and tone this in. And what that does in one fell swoop is give you a nice picture between light side and dark side. So I tell my students a lot it's one two-step drawing so the light's one, 
the dark is 2, and so 1, 2, 1, 2. And so you can read an image in its general sense, its compositional sense, very, very quickly. And this helps later on when you go back and start to work on the complexities of the detail and the nuance of the of the drawing. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna go down and build the shadow shapes now, the mouth a little bit. And uh, you know a, a lot of times if you're quick sketching this this is just this is already just enough. You know, once I block in the, the mouth area that might be all you have is, is five minutes 10 minutes so learn to shorthand learn to accept shorthand as uh, a proper means to study and to understand uh, uh, sketching for knowledge uh, and uh, analyzing form for knowledge I'm not copying the model for uh, photorealism for an exact copy I'm analyzing. I'm going to bring my own uh, design sensibilities and my uh, idiosyncras uh, idiosyncratic methods to the drawing and that's exactly what we want. You, I think you never want to look completely like anybody else but you know you want to study from these these great wonderful masters and take take their lessons uh, that they give you through their works and uh, be able to apply it somehow in some way to your own work uh, hopefully in the future okay so so let's get this mouth area kind of just set in uh, uh, briefly here want to make sure to keep continue on this tilt through here that's going to be important we have a tendency to straighten up things a little bit so we'll work on these cheeks and the uh, lips the gesture of the lips coming down because you don't have room in these smaller studies for lots of detail. And so you have to be able to analyze shadow shape in form. So he's got a very sly, kind of uh, confident, healthy smile with the pipe. It's very relaxed, a very comfortable pose, but yet very powerful at the same time. And most of the uh, lip and shadow is, or uh, lip is in shadow. <clears throat> and there'll be an indention there where the pipe goes here in a minute. Notice I have it. A lot of detail. There's no detail in the nostril. This is enough to tell us that this is a nose. By forming that shadow shape and down along the cash shadow to the filterman through here with the cheekbone. And the underneath cheeks here, jaws and the cheekbones kind of make a, a triangular shape. get the bottom lip as it tucks back underneath. He's got a very relaxed pose yeah, holding the pipe. This underneath lip is very sausage shaped and the lips are fairly full in this pose. And then get the underneath shadow of these lips. Now with the fountain pen I could use different colored pens on top of this but I don't think I will. Sometimes I just like the, the fountain pen to lay on its own because it has a little bit different. If you haven't noticed it makes a little bit different marking pattern. It looks a little bit more uh, 16th century which is okay, and I don't necessarily know that I'd want that for finished studies or finished works of art for my practice, but for these drawing techniques, it's I think great. So I'm going to go ahead and lay in 
the angle of the pipe, let me show you what we have here where the pipe comes in, coming down from the mouth and kind of over across the shoulder just a little bit there. I'll put on my glasses a little bit better. Forgot to put on my glasses, that'll help. So you can see where it comes down and it really is buried in the shadow of the right side of the head and it gets a little bit of highlight. You may not get all that in your sketch, just get the structure. So I'll show you that a little bit as we move forward. So I'll bring down the stem of that pipe so it falls about right there. <clears throat> and there's a little bit more shadow on this side as well. And we'll kind of map in where that pipe falls about right in through, right in through there. And essentially that's just a cylinder coming off that long tube cylinder of the, uh, the pipe there. There we go for now. Okay. So I'm going to bring down his beard, the goatee part of his beard in through here. <clears throat> a very, very full beard, young man's beard. He was probably in his late 20s, maybe, maybe early 30s, but it looks like late 20s, perhaps. <clears throat> We're going to continue to work now on these shadow shapes even further. To keep it nice and loose. You could almost even end the sketch here if you wanted. It's pretty close to a nice little quick demonstration in through here. I think I'll darken in around the, the cuff and the collar in through here, bring that down a little further. Here a little bit up into here a little more. It's relatively, relatively all the same value. And it starts to cascade down a little bit in through here. And a few lines to kind of say, okay, where does this hair end across here? A few darker lines to help me locate that, indicate that. And tighten up this nose, highlights about right there. Start to tighten up this nose a little bit. <clears throat> back up and maybe find a little bit of the nostril and through there. We don't have to belabor that. Sometimes this ink will sit up on the surface a little bit. It'll bubble up in this particular pen so you're going to have to be a little careful with that. If you're using a fountain pen you'll get the hang of it. <clears throat> Highlight up into here, so I'm going to just throw a little hatching across the forehead. Be careful with your hatching. I try to really follow the form of the head, curvature of the features. So it comes across.
get that rounded part of the nose in through here and then back over to this side of the nostril. Try to tighten up now the eye area and the sockets of the eye a little bit just to give it more interest and emphasis. Kind of the starting at the forehead down is really the focal point of the composition. It's almost kind of sleepy, sort of hazy, confident look. darker in those brow areas and also this deep socket within the eye closer to that cavity around the nose between here and this might go a little little darker <clears throat> You know, work this side of the, the uh, forehead a little bit. Let me go a little darker with my line work in through here. <clears throat> Just to get the sense of that really wild hair coming in through here. Okay. kind of stroking in a rounder pattern to show the volume underneath here of the chin and the collar uh, area as well kind of round and through here and up and over to keep that rhythm going and alive it's kind of a cross contour approach in through here You know, I feel like I could I could do this all day. Uh, I don't want to, and I'm going to stop this demo here in just a few minutes. I'm just going to go and strengthen up the shadow on the eye, just a touch. that bottom shadow shape and leave off where the brown the eye socket are coming together running through there okay anything else I can see I'm in kind of analysis mode here maybe run into here to bring this this higher cheekbone out that we need in through here right in through there and I think that's probably going to get it Good enough now for a study. Maybe the shoulder can be a little bit more, more dominant. So I'm going to bring the shoulder line out a little bit more. And maybe get a little, little bit of line work coming up into there. <clears throat> Okay, I 
I think that's going to be all. I'll just do some marks here to kind of move the eye around a little bit. All right, I think that's going to take care of it. So, you know, you could you could analyze this thing continually, but I think for the sketch, that was what, probably 20 minutes or so, I think that'll be enough. And so there you go. So we have Corbet here in the fountain pen study, the fountain pen only, which, which is... Uh, kind of the way I like to keep it, but you could certainly do washes over this or you could uh, do colored inks over, but I did want to give you just the opportunity to see what it looks like without the um, anything else on it. It's very, very, um, very, very kind of classical, traditional kind of thing. Okay, um, I think now what we'll do is uh, we'll do another one with uh, wash. So we'll do, we'll go back to the pit pen, we'll do a drawing, and then we'll do watercolor wash on top of that. So you'll see that. So look for that one coming up pretty soon. Okay, thanks a lot.